What's going on, man? What's up, bro? What's going on with you? Not much, man. Mm -hmm. How you feeling? Huh? How you living, bro? I'm chilling, man. Man, I'm good. I'm I good. I can't call it. Hopefully, this connection and everything go good. Yeah, it should be straight. Yeah, yeah, it should be. <laughs> uh, we got some people coming in. Y'all keep coming in. Man, I'm going to ask them a few trivia questions, man, while, while we get a crowd going in here, man. Um, I posted some questions on, on social media throughout the week, man, just trying to, you know, see who know you, see who want to get to know you, man, asking. Uh, what's your favorite pregame meal, man? You ain't got to answer right now. We're going to get to that later on. But uh, for everybody joining in, uh, we do have J-Ron Elliott here. And uh, y'all go ahead and, and let me know what y'all think his favorite pregame meal is. He like to have some steak. He'd rather have a pasta, or would he rather have some seafood? What do y'all think his favorite pregame meal is? What you know about know that music fan in that background, bro? Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, what I know about it. Man, I've been on this music all day, honestly, man, because of you, bro. Man, listen, bro. It, it, it set the vibe for the day. It's, it's a good vibe, man. It's, just, it's good for the soul, for real, bro. I see, I see. Uh, man, when you told me that, I'm like, man, hold on. Now, how, how can I, how can I find a way to vibe to this before before the game? You know. What I'm <laughs> but uh, hey, so I got another, listen. another, another uh, trivia question here. What's up? No, you good? You good? <laughs> we gonna get into it? Oh no, I ain't know if you. Uh, okay, cool, cool. For everybody who's tuning in, I got a few trivia questions. If y'all can just push our answer below. What do y'all think J. Rome game time music is? Y'all think he'd rather listen to the uh, Baby? You got Teddy Pendergrass. You hear that playing in the background. Or you think he'd rather listen to, uh, let's say, Jane Aiko? I know you be playing that now. Listen, bro, she, she fired, bro. <laughs> <laughs> she a little, little X-rated, but she good. She, I, 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 I could, I could vibe to her music. <laughs> I had a feeling you'd say that. Yeah, man, she with my dog Big Sean. Man, I like Big Sean. True, true. I know you be on all, all kinds of music, man. Man, I, I, I dabble here and I try to listen to everything, give everybody a chance before I judge it. But I'm real, you know. I'm, I'm real back to the basic with mine. You know, I don't really need too much. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. You put me back to the base. You took me back to the bases with this one right here, though. You took me back in time, right here. <laughs> Somebody say, "Big son, big son, some trash." That's that's my boy, man. That's my guy, man. Out there in Cleveland <laughs> doing his thing, man. Shout out to Big Storm. Okay, okay. Hey, man, I ain't even consider the uh, the time zone difference, man. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> oh <laughs> that no, was we important. We, we Gucci. <laughs> we Gucci. It, it, ain't, it ain't no big thing. I feel you. Hey, for those who coming in, y'all go ahead and hit that airplane at the bottom for me, please. And um and go ahead and share with your friends and your family. Let's go ahead and get the crowd in here for tonight's show. You waving at your neighbors, man. Yeah, man. I'm sitting in the garage. I mean I'm sitting in okay. the driveway, right in front of the garage. I it's feel like, you, man. Enjoying the weather. Trying to. It's like damn near 85, 90 out here. It's humid. Got yeah, it ain't too far away from here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, y'all live differently down there, man. Or, or up there, you know, but it's, it's different over there. Yeah, yeah. So, so we got it. We got a crowd coming in. Uh, thank y'all for joining in again. Those who are coming in, hit the arrow below and share this with your friends and family. Let's get a crowd going in. It's gonna be a great show tonight. Uh, you know. So thank y'all for tuning in again. Hey, but so we are gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, with our If Factor Friday today, we're going on our sixth episode here. Uh, shout out to our star guest here joining us tonight. Um, I'm going to allow him to introduce himself. Oh, man, you know, <laughs> what's up with y'all, man? j and Ellie here with my boy Rodney, you know. I'm looking to share my story and, you know, just have a good time for, for however long this interview might be. But, you know, we go have some little fun and... You know, enjoy the vibe for real. We're going to have a good time and talk about some great things. For real, for real. And don't mind us with the connection, y'all. Hopefully, you know, that, that don't fail, y'all, too much. Um, it's interrupting on my end. But uh, 
so hey, I do want to introduce y'all to the F Factor Friday show. Do want to inform y'all uh, what the show is about. Um, I'm having this show, man, uh, to 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 bring out those stories and those testimonies of these pro athletes who uh, lived out their dreams of uh, making it to the NFL, um, whether that's soccer, you know, major league uh, or baseball, major league baseball, uh, professional soccer, all our pro athletes out there who who lived out that dream, um, you know, who face some adversity, and face some obstacles. Um, and we're still able to break through, you know, um, it's a very tough path. I'm pretty sure they had to, uh, had to, had to travel. Um, but you know, that's what we're here. We're here to, uh, give you our ears, j Ron, and, um, you know, be with you along the way and experience, you know, what your journey was like. So, uh, again, thank you for joining us. Everybody coming in, go ahead and hit that arrow at the bottom and share it. <laughs> So, Jay Ron, Nick, you, um, good, you introduced yourself, man. You told us your name, man. Hey, let us know. Let us know where you're from. Where you from? Where you played college ball at? Uh, what's some of the pro team you done played with? Yeah, um, quick, quick intro. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, born and raised. Uh, you know, grew up in the family. Grew up in the household. Um, with with two older brothers, a younger sister. Um. You know, I have I grew up both my, both my parents. Um, they eventually split, and I was raised by my mom for the most part. Um, you know, still had a, a great relationship with my with my father. Um, go 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 to this house. Um, um, play college ball at Toledo. Um, has has some great memories there. Um, <laughs> some great times there, but um, I, I, I made it to the NFL. Uh, bounced around a little bit. Did like. Four, three, four years in Green Bay. Um, and where I go from? Uh, I got traded to Dallas um, in 2017. Stayed there for a little bit. Played for the Saints, the Dolphins, uh, Pittsburgh last year. Um, the hometown Michigan. team. Um, oh, I was in the uh, San Antonio, uh, San Antonio League, San Antonio team in the AFF as, as well too. So, kind of, kind of been a journey, man. But it's been exciting for real. Okay, man. Uh, you did name a few teams that you named the hometown team. You know, I, I would have loved to see you there uh, playing there. Man. I definitely would have put up to a game. But, uh, you know, it was nice, man, seeing you put on that helmet with that dolphin on the side, man. So, you know, I enjoy that there. Um, so, man, to give us a little history of uh, when you started playing sports, man. Did you first start playing football? Did you play basketball, soccer, baseball? You know, were you dibbling, dabbling around in any other sport? So, was bas uh, football your, your true love, your first love? Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, the first sport I ever played, team sport I played, was kickball. Um, my older brother played baseball, but I, I, I didn't really get into it as a youngster. Um, I, I, I played kickball. We, we were pretty good. Um, I wasn't the best player on the team, but I was, I was up there. I was pretty good, but uh, <laughs> it was, it was, a, it was a, a lot of older guys that played with us, but. Um, it, it was cool, but for, for me, my, my passionate, like something I'm really passionate about, or, or I was at the time back growing up, was was mainly basketball. And growing up in Cleveland, when when you, when you have LeBron James, you, you know, somebody look after, like I, I kind of wanted to be him so bad. So, like, I, everything I did was, like, play basketball and, and try to mimic LeBron. But, you know, unfortunately, like, LeBron's blessed. You know, he, he's a gifted a gifted. Oh, this connection over here. All right, we gonna get it going. Man, yeah, you Nick, were I'm chopping trying to in and like out. Hey, yeah. yeah, you were talking. You was talking. About, you were talking a lot of smack there about the basketball. Talking about you'll put twenty one up against you. Now I don't know about that. Now. <laughs> yeah, I still give you twenty one on the off day. You feel me? <laughs> Come on, some, man. Some things don't change. Hey man, you probably better off sticking with the kickball, man. You said yeah, that was man. your first team sport that you played. Uh, but so 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 LeBron, you nah. said LeBron James is your favorite athlete.
Yo. Say that again. So my, my favorite athlete had to be Ted Ginn Jr. Ted Ginn, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. You're pretty five. Pretty five athlete, man. Uh, from out of Ohio, from your hometown. Yeah, he was he was just like the neighborhood, the neighborhood uh everybody looked to, neighborhood hero for the most part. I got you, I got you. So just growing up, so that's who everybody looked up to. I was gonna ask you that, man. You know, when you started playing football, you know, throughout uh, middle school and even high school, where, where you looked out as that next guy coming up out of that being that that neighborhood athlete, you know? No, nah, not really. Um, where I come from, um, we have a lot of like great talent. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we we we. We could, we put a lot of guys into like the NFL and you know a lot of guys go to college. So uh, we don't really we, we we weren't really looking at the next guy up. It was just you know just waiting for your turn, waiting on your opportunity to you know to play in ball and you know and, and earn your your name and to earn your name in the neighborhood. You know so. Um, but for I got me, you. I, had, I understand that. That's that's pretty universal. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean it was pretty cool. From my senior year, I played I played with two All Americans. Um, Latuan Anderson and Christian Bryant, you know, so those guys were highly recruited. And we had a bunch of guys who were highly recruited, but, like, those two guys really stood out because – I feel it, man. Hey, it, it, the internet is kind of choppy right now. I'm not sure what's going on, man, but it's, it's going in and out. We're going to keep it rolling because I am picking up on a lot of what you're saying. Um, but just for everybody who's watching, you know, just please hang in there with us. Uh, bear with us as we go through this uh, Wi-Fi time. But um, so 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 you looked at the Ted again growing up uh, because he was from your hometown, uh, you know, the state of Ohio. And you wanted to be, you know, you wanted to live out the NFL dream like him. And you reached that level, man. Um, throughout, tell me about that high school, that high school career. You know, you say you played with those two All-Americans, man. But what was that like for you? Were you rank? Were you rank your senior year? Uh, were you all American? How was that? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I was pretty high, highly ranked. Um, I don't really know to remember the exact numbers, but uh, yeah, I mean, so starting as a freshman, I, I didn't play football my freshman year in high school because I was being r real immature. My grades wasn't where they needed to be at, uh, so I was ineligible. And then my sophomore year, you know, guys, you know, a lot of my a lot of my peers told me. You know, I should get I should get high school football to try because they 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 see me growing up playing football and they, and they really thought I, I could really be something. So, um, just 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 being around my brothers a lot. You know, we ended up playing football and and I started on JV. Um, it was kind of a culture shock for me because growing up playing football, I was like a a big a bigger athlete. So I played running back growing up, and then when I got to high school, they put me at DN. So it was like completely different change, a whole different outlook of the game for me. And uh, I just followed followed some of my older guys. And, yeah, I, I was nice with that pill, man. I, don't worry about that. I was nice with it. <laughs> man, I, I see you had a few touchdowns, man. Uh, you know, I got a, I got, a, I got a picture right here. I don't know how far you got with this, with this, with this rock right here, man. Uh, but it, but it do look like you don't, you had the pill in your hand, uh, quite a few times, man. Listen, uh, I ain't, I'm not. When, <laughs> huh. when I get that ball in my hand, bro, it's going up, going to the end zone with it, man. You taking it to the end zone. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting. I'm, I'm gonna find my way to the end zone. So this play right here, man. Would you? It looked like you was at receiver. You got number fifteen. You getting them the stiff arm. That's so good. Man, I see. I was. I was. I was the DN right there. I was probably like two twenty five at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take that one to the yeah. zone, man? Yeah, it was crazy. It was. We was playing Navy. We was going back and forth. Um, back and forth the whole game, and they were driving down the field, and um, they fumbled on like the. 30 yard line. I just so happened to pick it up, scoop it up. It was like a pile. I just scooped up and I just ran. And uh scoop and score. <laughs> yeah, I scoop and scored that. I ain't mean to give Buddy that stiff arm like that, man, but I had to show him where I was coming from, you know. I see. Man, you was posing for the hobby, man. But hey man, so you said something earlier, man. You, you didn't play your truth uh your freshman year of high school. You, you know, you spoke about your grades, you know, man. Um what did that mean to you back then? You know, you didn't play because of your grades, man. How did that motivate you and prepare you going forward? You know, did you take it more seriously? Uh, it, it took a few years for it to click for me. Um, I always knew that I was talented, but I didn't really have, have the um, the motivation. And, um, you know, once I met my high school coach, Ted Ginn Sr., he kind of got it about me and, and showed me showed me the ropes for real. So that, that really helped me out drastically. But uh, I was just playing football to have fun at that point, you know. 
Oh yeah, man. It, it's definitely a fun game, man. And, and you you start off at running back, man. You know, I'm I'm big on these highlights, man. People speak these these I ain't gonna say outrageous, but these these positions that you don't look like you would have you know been that deal back there, man. But you play a running back, so so I gotta believe you with that one. Listen, man. <laughs> My, my, I was the running back on the team. I was, like, one of the best players on the team. My sister was the cheerleader, you know. And uh, <laughs> my mom, every time, like, we ain't had no kickoff. So, like, we, it was just straight to straight offense, defense. And I swear, oh, yeah. I used to score, like, every play, like, every game on the first play, you know. just I guess guys were scared to tackle me or whatnot. But, yeah, man, it was, it was fun, man. It was, it was a lot of fun, for real. Hey, man, come, uh, coming out of high school, man, were you uh, – did you have a lot of offers, man? Did you know what school you wanted to go to? Were you – were you that guy coming out of, uh, coming out of high school? Uh, I wouldn't say I was what that guy, you? but I had. What led you to time? Toledo? Yeah, man. So I had a, I had a, a, a crazy recruiting process. So um, I had a bunch of like Big Ten school um, offers. I had a bunch of SEC offers. But um, I don't know. It was all about just the right fit for me, the right vibe. And um, mm-hmm. I really wanted to go to Michigan State. But, um, you know, my grades were permitting me to do that. So I had to go to prep school. And at the time, I didn't really know much about prep school, and I didn't want to do it. So I took um, some some MAC offers, and throughout my whole recruiting process, Toledo was the second school to offer me, um, and that just really that just really resonated and stuck with me because um, I knew the coach staff really well. Um, a lot of guys from my high school already went to the school, and you know I was able to go there and compete at a high level. You you say you went to a prep school after high school? No, Michigan Michigan State wanted me to go to prep school. Oh, oh! So they call it the the gray, the gray shirt. Yeah, like a gray shirt. But I ain't really, I wasn't really too fond of it at the time. I wanted to just go play football at, the, at, at that moment, and um, right. and I could get you knew into. You could play. Yeah, man, I, I knew I could play, and 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 I wanted, I wanted a lot to prove because growing up, my dream school was Ohio State, and um, you know, I was able to meet Jim Jim Trestle, and he told me some, he told me one of the realest things in my life. He he just kind of told me, he kept real with me, told me I was too small to play at that level at that moment. And uh, I, I just used that as motivation. You know, I, it, it was it was, honest, it was it was his honest opinion, and and it was the truth. So it, it really helped me out as far as like just just growing as a man. Oh man, you took that and ran with it. You know what I'm saying? Again, you know, somebody telling you something like that, you're too small to play at a level, man. You know, those those are the words you want to hear. You know what I'm saying? To to help you excel and push forward. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you when you when you battling some things. You know what I'm saying? Again, something like that. Although you may want to look down on it and get down, like no. Hey, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta lift yourself up and use those as motivational and encouraging words, man, to keep moving, to keep moving. You did that, man. Um, absolutely. absolutely. So, 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 how was the, uh, how was it throughout Toledo, man? What was your uh, experience like in Toledo? You know, D one school. Um, you stayed close to home. You know what I'm saying? How, how did that affect you? Uh, for me, I, I struggled. I struggled my first, my first year there. Um. It, it was just hard adjusting to college life, you know, um, dealing with. Uh, oh, man, I'm losing you. That really changed me because I, I, my, my, Freshman year, we stayed. It was six guys to like a room, but it was like three different rooms in one room. But um, yeah, I mean, once we once we moved out to the dorms, you were kind of on your own for real. And and I I took that chance to move in with a bunch of guys on the other side of the ball, and and they really just helped me grow up. They really helped me a lot, man. My, my roommates, it was uh, they played. It was a few running backs. It was Darius Reeves and uh, David Fluella, and then my other roommate was Kenny Staff. He was a receiver, so I started hanging with those guys, and those guys really like helped me just grow up. And, and take football a lot serious, take school a lot serious. And with the older guys, man, you were breaking up a little bit. You were kind of choppy, so I could I, I missed a little part of what you were saying. But were those were they older guys? Yeah, uh, one of them was the same, my same grade, and then two two of them was a year older than us. Okay, okay, cool. So so y'all all just clicked. Yeah, yeah, we we all just clicked. <laughs> we all just matched, man. <laughs> 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 hey, uh, so so man, we we got those group of friends, man, who who, who we stick with, we we mess with close, man, who who are definitely a uh, part of that backbone, man, that we go and grind with, we go and fight with every day out there on that field. You know what I'm saying? If if it wasn't nobody else close on that team, I'm pretty sure it was those those roommates of yours that you had. 
you know, you had to wake up with those guys and go probably go work out six o'clock in the morning with those guys. You know what I'm saying? Y'all boys holding each other accountable to, you know, going out there and getting it and grinding. Yeah, definitely, man. And and that's what it's about. That's, that's what it's really about with football, just building that team camaraderie and, and just having chemistry. Because everybody's good at football, but if if you all if, if if everybody's playing for one another and you got that that strong connection, man, it take you to the next level. It take it take the game to the next level, and it just make like everything that much better. So aside those guys that that you shared the room with, that you know those your roommates, man. What about back home, man? What was your community like back home? Uh, how how did they play a role into you know pushing you to to just continue to chase that dream, man, and live out that dream of uh, making it to the league? Yeah, it was everything because our um, our community, the Glenville community, you know, we all ride for each other. We all have each other back no matter what, whatever we're going through. So, um, you know, I just always want to make those guys proud back home and, you know, just 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 be something, do something in my life, you know, because I had opportunity and I didn't want to just flush it away for real. Hey, I see I see you involved with the community a lot, man. I see that you like to give back. And I see a lot of pictures, man, videos with you uh, speaking to the kids, man. You take a picture with the kids, you engage in interacting. Uh, with the kids and stuff like that, man. How how do you enjoy doing that, man? Uh, is that something that you always you always wanted to do? Give back. Yeah, I mean, I I can't say that's something I always wanted to do, but it's just natural for me. Like, you know, yeah. I always just try to look look out for people, look out for whoever it is, because you know, life hard, and and you never know what someone's going through. So I just try to go out there and whatever where whatever I'm doing in life, I try to like just have a smile on my face and just put put off positive energy into the world for real, because. It's a it's a lot going on, day in and day out with people, especially people I grew up around and some of the struggles we, we we faced growing up. So, you just I just try to be that bright light for, for people. Would you say that uh, playing sports and playing playing football, you know, was able to build that foundation for you, man, to you know help you know get you where you get you where you are? You know, again, you say the community involved, you giving back. Uh, would you say sports is that foundation? Yeah, I mean, I I, I guess you could say sports is that. Foundation, but um, for me, I even if I'm not playing football, you know, I'm, I'm gonna always be me. I'm gonna always find a way to get back, find a way to, you know, add value to to the ones around me, you know. And luckily, I've been sure. able to play sports, and and I can use that platform. But for me, it's it's always been bigger than sports. I've always been taught to to use football. Don't let football use you, you know. So, exactly. um, I've I've just been, you know, trying to trying to do things the right way, and you know trying to learn on the way you know obviously I, i'm human i make mistakes um but at the same time i'm i'm the type of guy who's going to learn from a mistake through other people experiences you know so um one thing my, one thing my coach always told me tell me even like when, when i'm getting cut or if i'm getting traded or, or whatever the case would be they always tell me that i'm the type of guy that you don't have to tell tell me what to do twice because if you tell me right. i'm right. i'm going to know what to do i'm gonna fix it and, and move forward but you know things happen and you, you got to adapt to it for sure, man. I think that's called, uh, you know, probably being coachable, man. <laughs> hey, you got you got some of your friends in here with with with, with the joke, man. But uh, they got me rolling <laughs> over here, man. Hey, uh, let me ask you. So, uh, you went through our, you went through our plan playing at Toledo, man. Up, leading up to your senior year of football, man. Um, when did when did it when did it hit you that you had a chance of making it to the league? You know, did you was that something you always dreamed of or? When you got to that junior senior year of football, you was like, "Hey, you know, I got a chance. Let me go ahead and take this and run with it." Yeah, yeah I mean, um, honestly, I never, I, I, I never thought I had a shot. I just hoped, I, I hoped it would work out. But you know, mm-hmm. I, I just really just tried to work, work, work as hard as, work as hard as possible as I can, and you know, whatever happens, happens for real. Because um, I knew just the way my college career was, I only played really my senior year for real for the most part like like meaningful snaps so um you know I, I was just gonna see see what happens you know I wanted to go to NFL but but come on, realistically like everybody wants to go to NFL and you know I didn't I, I didn't really think it'd be possible I just hope it was exactly. be possible honestly I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I hung this picture up on my wall and I looked at it every day like no nah, that wasn't me you know I, I I watch movies to motivate me but at the same time I like I just really hope that it, it You say you didn't expect it to happen. So, so 
So, man, with, with all that hard work you was putting in, man, you, you're not going as hard, you're not grinding as hard, you know, to, you know, not see the other side of what, what it's going to look like, man. So, like you said, hoping that it's going to work out. And, and uh, only playing majority of that senior season there, uh, you know, getting the opportunity, your name being called and you going out there performing, putting up some numbers. Um, you know, what was that like for you? What was that like for you after the season, man? Were you, were you wanting to get drafted? You know, everybody wanted to get drafted, but were you wanting to get drafted? Yeah, I mean, for me, like, I just knew, like, for me, like, I knew I, I probably wasn't going to get drafted. So I played that last year, my senior year, just freely. Like, I just played, went out there, played hard. I played, I just had fun. I had fun with the game, thinking that might be my last year, honestly. So um, when the draft process came by, um, my agent told me the numbers wasn't really looking too good. Um, and, I, and I understood how the business worked and everything. But mm -hmm. that's just how I go for the most part. I, I, I'm going to always work hard, but, like, this is – Everybody works hard, you know. So it's like, what, what's what's putting you a next ahead of the next man? So, um, love you too, bro. But um, yeah, man, I, I just really try to just do my best part, like working hard and, and doing everything the right way. Just put myself in a position to be successful, no, like no matter whatever it was. Like as far as even if I didn't get drafted, I was gonna try to go back to help coach at Toledo, like help with recruiting and whatnot. So, um, you know, I, I try not to just limit limit myself to one thing, you know. Put all my eggs in one basket. For sure. I got you, man. I understand that, man. Hey, uh, we got some Packers fan in here in, in the comments, man. I don't know if you can see them. Go Pack, go. We got some cheese here man, in the building. You know, I'm, I'm a I'm a cheese here for life. You know, I might have boxed around, <laughs> man, but but Green Bay, Green Bay home for me. You know, so um, everybody know how that hey, go for me. My, the close people to me know how much Green Bay means to me and my family. Hey, um, for everybody joining in, hey, appreciate y'all coming in. Go ahead and hit that air, uh, paper airplane at the bottom. Share this amongst your friends and family. Let's get a crowd going in here. I do want to let y'all know we have uh, J. Ron Elliott here, uh, one of our pro NFL players. Um, if you have any questions, uh, <laughs> go ahead and drop them down below in the comments. You can hit the question um, down at the bottom as well. We'll get to your comments shortly. We'll ask them throughout the show. I already see a, a question in here from my boy, Teron Kosa. Um, what's your thoughts on players declaring for the draft early, man, as early as their junior year? Uh, my thoughts? Um, I mean, it really depends. Like, for me, I'm really – I really like if, – if you project the first round, yeah, that's cool. I, I would I would take it. But uh, anything other than that, I'll go back to school and, and try to make sure my stuff stay first round. You just really don't know. So, um, you know, that, that – the, the degree will stay with you for life, you know, and the football, you know, you're one injury away from being, it being over. So I'm always tell guys to go back to school, but everybody's situation is different. You know, some guys need the money now, so they got to go, go chase the dream now. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really my thoughts, but you know, if you, if you had the opportunity, um, you know, do what's best for you and your family, you know? And man, I, I just seen something, a, a punter, a long snapper, man, he just got the opportunity to go back to college and play. He, you know, he, he went and declared for the league early and didn't work out for him, but now he's going back and enrolling in the school and playing college again. You know, you think that's something great that, that, that should stick across the board? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I honestly feel like um, it's, it's a lot of guys who declare early and, um, you know, they don't get drafted, so they, they got to figure out life. I really feel like they should be able to let those guys go back to school even if they declare early and don't get drafted or, or get picked up because – they they one benefit from going back to school getting a degree, and then two that they'll benefit from getting more film at, and have an opportunity to get drafted or getting picked up the next the following year. For real, man. Hey, cause what's the what's the uh, possible projected route for those guys who who declare early and don't get that shot? You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, four I'm, times right now. I'm not really sure. I, I just know I know. So my so second year in the league, it was like a stat that showed like 71 guys declare early. And none of them got drafted, or, or like seventy-one guys didn't get drafted that declared early. So it was like that was those guys was like they couldn't go back to school, so they were just out out of like you know out of school, out of football. So it was crazy. And um, yeah, I, I feel like they need to educate themselves a little bit more because I, these agents will do anything to, to sell you just so you can make them make their company money, make their their branch money. So uh, you got to make sure you got the right guys in your ear. Speaking of agent, man, what 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 agent do you uh, think your um, what role do you think your agent played throughout your professional experience? You know, throughout your prof professional career, you think it's very very important for somebody to educate themselves early on the agent or somebody they want to build that relationship with 
um, you know, that may have a better interest? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, for me personally, I'm all, I'm real big on relationships and, and respect, you know, so if, you, if we can, if we can, if we have respect, I can work with you, you know, and um, me and my age right now, he, we have a great connection, like a great bond, and, and we, we are able to talk about, you know, football, life, like whatever the case may be, so he's, he's like a big brother to me, so um, it, it's, it, he, he's labeled as my agent, but like I look at him as, uh, as a family member. For sure, man. I think you definitely need, want to have that family bond, man. You know, you got somebody, you know, you're doing a partnership or, you know, you got somebody, part of, you're part of a team with somebody, man, that you want, you know, to see bring out the best in you. Um, we got another question in here, man, from, from one of your cheese heads, man. They say you were clearly better better than Nick Perry, but, uh, you know, you know, how, how was it? How was it? You say, how was it being a backup to someone you were clearly better, better than at Green Bay, you know? Uh, or... How do you feel politics is taking over the league? Yeah, um, I don't really, I don't really want to get into the politics and all that stuff because it's all a little bit different. But um, for sure, I don't really, I don't really know how this stuff works, you know. But as far as like me being me being better than Nick Perry, um, I respectfully decline because if there's things I've taught, Nick, I mean that I've learned from Nick that he's taught me. So Nick was an outstanding guy. He he battled injuries at the time throughout his career, but um. You know, I've seen Nick have three sack games, multiple three sack games. You know, and with, with broken hands and, and and just battling battling through injuries. So, um, you know, things work out the way they should be. They they should. So my time at Green Bay, it, it didn't sure. go the way I wanted to, but like I I still had a great time learning from some great guys, and it was just hard getting on the field. You know, I played behind guys like Julius Peppers, Clay Matthews, Nick Perry, Mike Neal. You know, all these guys are, are elite pass rushers. So it's like. For sure. I, I had I had to find a way to go in the field, you know, but those guys I, I love I love the bond we had during that during that run we had in Green Bay. Those guys were, were really special and definitely big brothers to me. Man, you, you spoke about uh you know, you saying Nick Perry had three game sacks, man, and, and that's another trivia question I had asked throughout the week, man. Uh asking everybody, you know, how many sacks do they think uh, what's the most amount of sacks they think you ever had in the game? Uh, so uh, between two to ten uh, sacks in a game, uh, y'all go ahead and drop the number, uh, the most amount y'all think you ever had in the game, man. Uh, ain't nothing better, ain't nothing better than uh, sacking the quarterback, man. But to get a strip sack and it's, it, to, to, to pick up, scoop and score your own strip sack, man. To pick up and uh, score your own strip sack, how that feel, man? You had one uh, in that um, that Panthers, Carolina Panthers game. Tell me about that. Jerome, I think your connection going back. Jerome, you might have to turn off your Wi-Fi since you're outside. Your Wi-Fi connection may not reach outside the house. Um, or you may have to get closer to the house. You breaking up. Can you hear me? Jerome. You hear me? Hey, 
Hey, what's the connection like? Connection like? Can you hear me? There you go. <laughs> For real. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with the connection. I'm losing you, J Ron. I'm losing you. I lost J Ron. We're going to see if we can get him back in here. Um, so y'all stay tuned. I seen some good guesses out there with the amount of sacks y'all think he had in the game. You got seven, you got three, you got six, seven, three, and six. Anybody else got any uh guesses on the most amount of sacks they wrong ever had in the game? And that's at any any level. Uh, you got high school, college football, uh, high school, college of the pros. He was a beast with them, uh, with the AFL team, with the uh, San Antonio Command, San Antonio Commanders. Uh, I think he led that league in sacks out there, uh, and last year in 2019. Let's see if he can get back in here. Colson say four. I mean, if y'all got any other questions, go ahead and post them below. I'm going to see if I can get J-Ron back in here. Let me see here. He should be getting back in here very, very soon. How everybody day going? If y'all had a great day today, go ahead and drop a 100 in the comment section. I wish I could set some uh, some hearts back with y'all. I love y'all for tuning in with me tonight. Uh, enjoying this great, awesome story from J. Ron Elliott. Other NFL, currently a free agent right now. Um, but I'm pretty sure things are going to work out for him and get him back in that lead. Y'all go check out his highlights. Because uh, the dude, man, he a beast. You know, he uh, played DN and outside linebacker. He uh, played DN and outside linebacker. Um, coming off the edge, he a beast, y'all. Let me see here. Is he back in here? There you go. Oh, there you go. That boy back in here, he went and chill. He went and had to go up in the movie room. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get right, man. My bad for the connection issues. Nah, you good, man. You good. Hey, man. Um, so you back in the house, man. Hey, so man, we've been all over the place, man. We done talked about a lot of things, man. Uh, what was it like? Uh, how, how did you? How prepared did you feel after college, man, transitioning into the league? You know, how, how did your agent play a role in that? Uh, for the most part, it it was um, what's up. <laughs> It it wasn't uh it wasn't really a tough transition for me because I I came in as undrafted and honestly I, I felt like I was it was ninety guys on the roster I felt like I was guy number ninety so I had no expectations nobody really Dang. expected me to go out there and make the team anyway so for me I went out there and just had fun with it, you know because I didn't get drafted so I was like I'm not supposed to be here anyway so I kind of used that 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 mode I was kind of in that mode just you know just trying to prove them all wrong in a sense you know and just have fun with it. So you feel like at that point in time, you know, like you said, how you looked at it, you felt like you were the 90th player on the roster at that time, man. Did you feel like, you know, that was that was much uh, adversity or, or a tough obstacle for you to break through? You know, it was like something like, hey, what what you got to lose? You know, they 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 kind of counted you out, but you are gonna prove them wrong. No, I, I, I ain't really I ain't really look at it as adversity or anything tough. Like it it, it is what it is in that in that aspect because you know I had just. Uh, reached the NFL so I, I was I was kind of happy to be there but at the same time like adversity for me I, I had been through so much growing up like that was just nothing for me you know so right right um, kind of like when I when I think of adversity I think about you know 
sleeping at sleeping at my mom's friend's house with her her and my sister sharing beds and I'm sleeping on the floor and then watching my mom get up and, and go catch the bus at four thirty in the morning to work two jobs to, to help put food on the table for us, you know? Like that's sure. adversity that's adversity or just you know, moving from from fourth grade to tenth grade, I moved every year I went to a different school. So I'm having to learn I'm having to meet new people. I'm having to get out of my comfort zone each day, each each week, I mean each year. So that's adversity for me. But like playing football, I see the ball, I'm gonna get the ball. Like I don't I don't care right. who's in front of me, I'm gonna find my way to get to get the ball. So so football was your getaway, you know what I'm saying? Football was where you can go and find peace. You know, again, uh that, that that gotta be tough, man. That gotta be tough, bro. Uh the situation that you had to go through growing up, you know what I'm saying? But you know, going out there and, and, and engaging and interacting with your friends, man, that you that a team. You know what I'm saying? Um Yeah, just just going out there and getting with your team, man, and, and, and growing around them every year. Were you always playing like how was that with you playing uh, you know, going to a new school each year? Did you always play for the same teams or did you bounce around teams? Yeah, so um, well, so when I was bouncing around, I was playing Pop Warner still, but I still played for the same neighborhood, um, East Ninety Seven Street Bulldogs, um, in Cleveland. But as far as high school, I went to all boys school um, my sophomore year, um, called Gann Academy. So Ted Gann Jr. Um, his dad opened up a, opened up his own school, and we all went there and um, play. And, but we we played football for Glenville. It was our it was our our local school, it was a neighborhood school. And um yeah, I kinda worked my way up the ladders in that aspect, but uh yeah, I mean it, it it was very it was challenge it was some challenges we had to face, you know, but um you know, I, I was just always I always try to have fun with whatever was going on. So that that kinda helped me out a lot. I feel you, man. I um throughout throughout your years with the Packers, man, two thousand uh sixteen, man, I saw that you were nominated for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that's that's a very prestige uh, accolade, a very prestige award, that, uh, you know, throughout the NFL. Um, that right there just speaks volumes, man, on, on your impact, you know, through uh, for the community, man. Tell me about tell me about some of your community outreach and engagement. Um, how were you getting involved with the community? I saw you a part of something called Dream Builders. What's, what's Dream Builders about? Yeah, so it's basically a foundation, um, like a nonprofit foundation to – you know, help just help set up help set up, help set up community events and community outreach events and um I didn't really want to start my own foundation because I didn't really know what which avenue I wanted to take. So I just kinda of branched on with Dream Builders, but it's just a, a foundation to help help guys be able to donate and, and, and you know, issue the money out from um places different places. I got you, man. Is that something we could probably see later on down the road from you? You um you start your own non profit? Yeah, um I mean, I'm not gonna rule it out, but um, at the same time, I'm not really, really. Fuck, I'm, I, I'm, I'd rather ha have somebody else's name on. I don't really like the recognition. <laughs> I don't really like the attention to it, you know. So, uh, yeah. I, I try to keep. I, I try to. I, I, I like to be like a silent donor. I don't really like people knowing what I'm doing, like, or, or I don't really want to do it just because it's the cool thing to do, you know. So, right. Um, I, I try to. I just try to, you know, look out whenever I can, as far as like whatever the case may be, you know. Um. Got people going through stuff or, or starting new business or something like that. Like I just try to let them know that people like always are or are, are looking at what you're doing and and uh, I try to do things the right way. I feel you on that, man. Hey, we got a few guesses for the most amount of sacks you had in the game, man. Somebody said three. Um, that's a pretty that's a that's a pretty uh high number right there, man. Somebody said seven. You got somebody with four, man. Go ahead and share with them the uh the most amount of uh, sacks you ever had in the game, man. Yeah, so so in high school it was it was it's was actually my first um it was a scrimmage. We was playing Painesville Riverside and um we it was we playing we had ten plate increments and I had six. Okay, straight. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, straight. <laughs> no time. I had six. Um it was crazy because we had ten plays, I had six sacks and ten plays and and I was out there playing football, but after afterwards when I came out sideline, like, everybody was like slapping my helmet, you know, drowning me in water and stuff. And you know we sophomores at the time they like come on bro like you you finna make the varsity you about to make the varsity because like yeah. where where I come from our team it was full of dogs so you had to you had to really knuckle up to even to even dress with varsity so that kind of solidified me like getting my name out there and, and giving me opportunity to like help my career go but yeah it was it was just it was crazy cause, like 
I was I kept getting sacks, but I, I was just so I was just like in a zone. It, it was zone. crazy. It, it, it was happening so fast, to be honest with you. You turned that switch on, man, and you and you, and you ran up them sacks that day, man. So throughout your career, man, playing football at any level, man, I'm pretty sure with you racking up these sacks, I know you done got a lot of nicknames, man. I see a few people here calling you bum. I'm not sure where bum come from, man. I don't know if they got something to do with football. Uh, I heard sack master. You know, that's a, a pretty generic uh, universal uh, sack name. But then also I saw a picture, man, floating around the Internet, man. Uh, they was calling you the Shakespeare. Shakespeare, man. What's up? What's up with your nicknames? Where these nicknames come from? And which one? Which one is your nickname? Uh, I mean, a lot of people call me bum, but um, it was just something I got from 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 Ted again. Um, him and his brothers, they 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 call everybody bum. Oh, and it's, like nice another, it's just another, it's just another ver version of, of bro. But um, we we it kind of it kind of stuck because a lot of my coaches called me that in college, and it kind of just carried on, but. Um, when I got to Green Bay, guys called like some of the reporters called me Snack Master, and my trainer called me um, Shakespeare because apparently he said all he ever did was see me make plays. See so me make plays. That kind that kind of just stuck and and it resonated and the fans kind of took it and ran with it and and I kind of enjoyed it. But you know that's my 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 brother talk about Mr. Nice Guy, but that's <laughs> that that's something that always stuck with me, Mr. Friendly, Mr. Nice Guy, because I used to really I used to honestly like sack quarterbacks and I help them up. You know, yeah, have them up. and go back to the huddle. But I used to get in trouble from the, from my coaches in high school. Like they used to be talking talking mess to me about it. But man, that yeah, is man, some, that is some nice guy stuff right there, man. We're on the defensive side, man. We it, you, you, it is. But look, I want I, I'm gonna sack I'm gonna sack you. I want you to stay in the game because I'm I'm, try, I'm learning your tendencies. I'm gonna get right back up. I, I want you to get right back up. I'm gonna sack your ass again. My bad. But I, I'm, I'm coming, bro. No, coming. I'm, I'm coming, bro. I'm, I let them know. Now nah, I feel you, man. You don't want them to get out the game. You want them to feel your wrath. That's why you help them back yeah. up. We go ahead and get back to the huddle, call the play. Let's go do this again. Cause, cause you, if you get a new quarterback in, there, you got to learn this whole new can mechanics. They go change mm -hmm. the playbook up. They go do everything when you get a whole new quarterback in there. So, I want you to stay in there, and I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get some more sacks, bro. For sure, for sure, man. That's gonna mess up your flow. Uh, let's see here, man. Hey, man, the times we we're in right now, man. Um, with 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 this with this with this police brutality thing going on, man. Uh, there was a video that I see uh, Michael Michael Harris put out there. Uh, I think this went out here like late last night, man. With with uh, connecting with a lot of guys, putting out a video on how you know you know they don't support. You know they are so much against this pol police brutality, man. What's your take on that? These guys also said that um uh, you know what is it going to take for the lead to you know do something because how would they react? in regards to something like that happened to them? Yeah, I mean, I can't really speak on the, the league behalf, um, you know, because it, it, it's up to a higher power. But for me, uh, it's, just very, it's a very unfortunate time, but it's something we've been living through for years. And, and I'm glad guys are finally starting to speak out about it. And, 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 it's, and it's really becoming a, a topic now. It, it's just not like something that's brushed under the rug. It's really becoming a conversation going forward. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what, what comes from it because – there's been multiple times in my life where I've been, you know, affected by racism or whatnot. But like for me, I'm gonna always do the do the right thing and, and you know mm -hmm. just pray for them, smile about it, and, and try to move forward. Because I've been I've been put in situations where I was I wasn't doing anything at all. Like I was just enjoying my life, living my best life, and, and cops would stop me, threw me on cop cars, pull guns on me. So it's just something that become accustomed to me, and and, and it's not right. It, it's not right at all. But um, I'm just glad we're finally having that, that that conversation, that topic about it, because everybody don't have the same mindset I have. Everybody don't carry the way they, they carry themselves the way I carry myself. So sure. um, it, it, it's just something that really need to, needs to be talked about, honestly. Yeah, man, I agree, man. Because uh, man, it, it, it'll be a, it'll be it's been sad times right now, man. But it also be a pretty sad, you know, uh, time, man. If if anybody a part of the league. Again, uh, what you know, experience, uh, you know, something like that, or death, you know, from police brutality and things like that, man. Um, although we have seen some guys in the NFL, what uh, Martellus Bennett or, or his brother, uh, his brother uh, was involved, you know, and, and had some excessive force, you know, used against him at one point in time with police and stuff like that, man. So, you know, who knows how that situation would have played out. Um, anybody, y'all got any questions, go ahead and drop them below. Uh, we still have some time here with J. Ron Elliott. Uh, you got the sack master here, Mr. Shakespeare. 
uh, man of the year nominee, uh, bum. You know, man, you got anything else on your mind you want to speak about, man? Nah, I mean, for the most part, I'm, I'm, you know, it's a tough time we're going through right now, but um, I'm excited. You know, things are starting to look up far as like with basketball coming back. Uh, hopefully, we, we can have an exciting football season. Um, just, I'm just putting in work. You know, with, with some of my guys over out here in Dallas, um, just, just trying to, just trying to do what we got to do to be ready for when when that time comes, and you know, and hopefully things get back to normal. But um, yeah, I'm excited. You know, I'm excited for what's going on. Man, uh, we got a question down here uh, from my guy Scratch. Man, what's your favorite team you played for, and why? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I try to take something positive from every team I played on, um, but hands down, I, I, I spent four years in Green Bay, so like naturally, like, I become attached to them. Like my, I had my, one of my sons was born in Green Bay, so Green Bay will always be a special place in my heart. Uh, I loved every moment of being a Packer. You know, it was like it was just like a dream. It was like. It was. It never felt like work. It never felt like I was doing something. I felt like I was kind of stealing, just getting money, just getting paid to to, to be there and be a part of that, that opportunity. But somebody, for me, like far as far as like a is, locker room, like what we had in New Orleans, like it, it was crazy. Like like I've never been a part of nothing like that. Like even college, high school, five six different teams in the, in the in the pros. Like the the vibe in New Orleans, the camaraderie we had in New Orleans, like it was just all genuine. It was all real love. It was just all like a brotherhood. And it was just priceless, like priceless feeling, just being being around those guys day day in and day out. So throughout your experience in the league, I, it was a question, man. I went back to it at the top, man. Did, did football seem uh, more as a job or as an opportunity, bro? So yeah, so um, for me, I, I think I looked at it in both ways. Um, when I when I went when I got when I was undrafted, I signed. Um, it was just an opportunity for me to you know represent my my college, my family, my neighborhood. Um, to go p to play for the Packers, and, and I kind of just tried to make the most of the opportunity to try to enjoy every moment of it. And mm -hmm. then four years later, I, I get traded to the Cowboys, and I, I go from, like, playing these guys in the playoff multiple times, having turned into a rivalry, to going to being on the, uh, being on the Cowboys. So mm -hmm. it was like – it was like – a whole 180 for me. Like, I, I for didn't, real. like, for me personally, I didn't, it, it was crazy because I, I didn't really grasp it at the time. Like, I was so heartbroken from getting traded. I didn't really want to be in Dallas at the time. I didn't really want to be a cowboy at the time, you know, because I was still like, I, I, I wanted to be in Green Bay. I had just re signed back there. I wanted to, you know, keep it going. So when I got traded, I was like, okay, this, this is a, this is a business. They, you hear it all the time. It's a business, but you don't realize it or understand it until you go through it. And when I got traded, it took it took for me a while to get adjusted to it. And by the time I got adjusted to it, it was too late for me. I, I couldn't put my best foot forward out there, you know, because mm -hmm. I, was, I wasn't really there mentally. So um, then I started bouncing around. Um, I was in New Orleans. I had probably my I probably had my most productive preseason in New Orleans, but I ended up spraining my ACL and, and the business side kicked in. Uh, and then, um, like, last year, I got cut six times from the Steelers. Like, six times in one year. In one year. So. Yeah, so like you can see the business business side of the game, but at the same time, like it was it was great communication, um, and and that made it so much easier for me, honestly. So um, I've seen both sides of the game. I feel like I feel you, man. I feel you, man. Hey, I'm pretty sure things gonna work out for you, man. I know you work, and I see your Instagram. For those who don't follow J. Ron, follow him. I have him tagged and pinned below. Go follow him, man. This guy's working and grinding every day, putting that work in. Um. So I'm pretty sure things are definitely going to work out for you, man, getting you back out there on that field this year, man. Because, I, man, I love to see you play, man. I've been watching your, your highlights, man. And, and you'll be stuck down that field, man, coming out there on, on that edge, you know. And that's my take on it. Man, I, I'm all right, man. I just <laughs> – I try to go out there and have fun, man, play for my brothers, you know. Um, at the end of the day, like, I, I, I'm working. I'm doing what I got to do. But but for me, honestly, um, mm -hmm. I put it all in God's hand, honestly, like – I've tried. I tried to live that life of, I'm doing it my way. I'm doing it. I'm gonna do what I gotta yep. do. I know how I want to do. I know how to get there. But for me, honestly, like for me, when I put God first in my life, and and I don't mean to get religious on, for guys who's not religious in, in here, but for me, like it, it just like everything starting to make sense. Everything just starting to fall forward for me. Start start falling fall into the right place. So I can't really I can't really control certain things, so I only try to focus on what I can control. And that and sure. one thing I can't control is well, two things I can't control is my attitude and my effort. And and that will never change wherever I go, um, whatever I do in life. 
Yeah, man. Don't change those things, man. They got you this far, man. You got some great things coming about you. I got another question here that's come through. Um, what advice would you give uh, to the less fortunate kids, man, wanting to follow your path? Yeah, I mean, for me, um, like whatever you're chasing in life, find a mentor, find whoever doing whatever you want to do in life, and who's being successful at it, and follow their and and follow their habits, follow and see what they do that makes them successful. And um, if it's a football player you like, watch his YouTube channel, watch it, watch what they do off the field, on off the field, or or, or whatever the case may be. Like just follow what they do and and try to. And, and try to mimic everything they do and, and ask a bunch of questions. Like, no matter how annoying you think they might be or dumb they might think you think they might be, just ask questions because there's a lot of knowledge out there that, that we don't really get and we don't really get, especially if, if you in the shell. So just step out of your comfort zone and just ask questions and just try to soak up as much knowledge as possible. For sure, man. For sure, man. Appreciate that there, man. Um... There's a lot of people who look up to you, Jay Ron, and you got two little boys, man, that's looking up to you as well, man. So continue to be a role model for those who following you, man, who look up to you. Um, you know, man, again, thank you uh, for joining us tonight here on the If Factor Friday. Um, I got one last question for you, man. Uh, what is your If Factor? You know, everybody here on the call, we've, we've listened to your story, your testimony, man. We, we've got a little synopsis of what your experience was like uh, in pursuit of the draft or – your NFL dream, what, what's your if factor? Um, honestly, I, I <laughs> just be yourself, man, no matter what. Like, for me, like, I, I always try to stay true to who I am, and that's me just laughing, joking, spreading love, mm -hmm. having fun. Um, I go through the same – I go through struggles everybody go through. I go through depression. I go through ups and downs. I go through sadness. I go through happiness. I go through joy. I go through pain. So, I just try to have fun through it all because we all – and we all going through something, but, like, we don't know unless you – like, people won't know unless you talk about it. And I'm so comfortable talking about whatever I go through in life because it's either helping me – it's, it's helping me learn and, and grow from it. And I, I just love sharing my story. I just love being able to talk to people and figure out what they're going through because at the end of the day, we all go through the same stuff. We all got the same problems. Right. This is a different, we all got problems. different form. And just, just be you through it all. Like, I don't care what it is, like. I just I would find a joke or, or or some type of make it funny in any situation, no matter what the case may be, because when we're all laughing, we're not thinking about what's going on. So I really just try to bring that light and just have fun, like no matter whatever it is. So I would say for me, it's always just to be me, no matter what. Like no matter what, I've always tried to be me and, and stay true to me. Like I can't be nobody else, you know. So I just try to do what I got to do to be to be the best guy. For sure, man. We I feel you on that. So if you weren't um, being your best self, if you weren't, you know, striving to be uh, be who you are, who you are meant to be, man. You know, you things probably wouldn't play out and uh, play out the way play out the way they did for you, huh? Yeah, I don't really know because I I, I can't really focus on that, man. I, I, yeah, I'm gonna always try to have a good time, man. I'm gonna all, like no matter whatever the case, if we running. I'm going to talk mess about it, but at the same time, we, we go get it in. So I'm going to talk my little stuff, but at the same time, I just really just try to have fun with it. Like, whatever, man. And, and it's crazy how how just smiling can just change everything and just laughing and joking and, and you know, just just being just being present in the moment can help everything, bro. Just not worrying about what's going on later or what's coming up or how am I going to do this, how I'm going to fix this. Like, you can't worry about it.